What's going on growers? James Pigioni coming to you live from Jersey. It's a beautiful spring day here and the gardens are drinking in the sun. There's a big difference between having a backyard that you're constantly taking care of and having one that takes care of you. So today I want to show you what happens when you take that regular backyard and you turn it into a garden. Let's go! As you can see, the gardens have really started to fill up now that the perennials are fully awakened and the fruit on the trees are starting to set. In this area I'm at right now, this used to be all grass. I spent all that time, all that effort just to maintain it for very little reward. The difference, the sharp contrast is a fruit tree, our garden. Look at this thing. It's probably less maintenance than a lawn and look at the fruit it's producing for me. This peach tree here is one of the first ones that I put in many years ago and I cherish it because it's produced a lot of fruit for me and I've had a lot of fun growing it. But you'll notice the clay on the fruit and I spray that on the fruit now. It keeps away the plum curculio. It doesn't completely keep them away, but it helps a little bit. And it's an organic spray. It's just kale and clay that's super, super fine. Right next to me here, you'll notice I've got a number of raspberries. This is one of my favorite varieties, the yellow Ann. And it's an everbearing raspberry or a fall raspberry. So with your fall raspberries and your everbearing, they're basically the same thing. You can either get two crops or one crop. So let me show you on the top here. This right here, last year the whole cane grew up and it flowered on the top. You can see some of the old raspberry. And then if I cut that all the way down, it would have come up and flowered in the fall again. I didn't cut it down, I left it. Because I left it, now we're getting the fruit in the spring. That's why it's ever bearing. In the past, I used to just cut these down all the way to the ground and only get the fall berries because typically those taste better. But I had some issues the last couple of years with some of the bugs late in the fall. So instead, I'm just going to focus on a lot of these spring ones. That's one thing you can do when Masanobu Fukuoka was the master at this, using time to your advantage to avoid things like pests or even to do some of the work for you. Right here, you'll notice we've got a lot of our seeds and stuff that I haven't put in the ground yet. I've got way more than I ever have, and I put in the ground this year even more than I ever have. So it's a lot of fun when you have this selection. I encourage you to get your own little nursery going if you can. And right next to me here, we've got this delicious little gooseberry, a fun berry that we snack on, a pretty early one. They're getting large, but these ones will get even bigger. I want to switch up the perspective now and give you a first person point of view, a little food forest tour of how everything is doing. Right in front of me, we've got the fig trees. We propagated these last year. We love getting free plants. Above me, we've got the grapes. Those are starting to flower, looking really healthy. Then straight ahead of me, we've got that peach tree, the one that I just showed you. Underneath that, we've got some oregano. That's a nice perennial, comes up every single year. And then under the peach tree too, we've got a bunch of strawberries, new variety that we just put in this year, we're excited about. And then above that, we've got the other set of grapes. Those are our Concord grapes. Then we've got blackberries right next to me over here. I've also got more grapes to my right. We've got a few apple trees here, a few different ones. This is a three grafted apple tree. And then another one of our pride and joys is monster peach tree. And people thought I was nuts when they saw how much I was pruning out the center. But that's what we have to do here in Jersey. We get a lot of high humidity. So we want to make sure we have plenty of light, plenty of airflow. And we have to reduce some of the fruit too, because this thing is just loaded with fruit. They always are. So it's easier to prune it in the winter and then have to thin all of it. And in front of me, there's a tree we took out right here. That was a Mount Morenti cherry. And I've got a bunch of sweet cherries. I like the sweet cherries a lot better than the sour cherry. So we'll probably replace that with something else, maybe another bed or something. To my right, I just put another bed in here, a little raised bed, just one foot wide. And we've got a bunch of different stuff planted, a lot of my zucchinis and uh, some sunflowers, some tomatoes. So this zucchini variety is my favorite one. I believe it's called the Costaluto Genovese. I've got a little pawpaw tree right there too in front of you. And I'll show you that as the year progresses and the continued growth of it. A bunch of currants in the back that are huge too. As I turn around, we've got the monster Bing cherry. It's got some fruit on it, looking really nice this year. Then we've got the, uh, the other cherry doing real well, got fruit on it too. It's pretty cool next to that, that bed right there. The uh, raised bed I bit, built out of pallets because you can sit on that raised bed and I've got some tomatoes planted and then you look up and there's cherries above you. So it's pretty cool. And then right to the right of me, we've got the bed of potatoes. They're doing fantastic, hoping to get a lot of potatoes out of those. And then another monster peach tree. We love the peaches. They're one of our favorite fruits to eat fresh. So we know we have a lot of those planted. That's one thing I encourage all you to do. Make sure you grow things you love to eat. That's like the main thing. Then you can see straight ahead, look at the size of those hazelnuts. I think even Tuck is impressed. Impressed, Tucky? You like the hazelnut boy? It's a pretty good one, isn't it? This guy's the best. We'll have to grab him a snack in a little bit. But the other hazelnut too, it's just, I didn't realize they had gotten this big. In the early spring and they were just looking like sticks. 
I just, I couldn't fathom it. But now it's just incredible. I need to stand in front of one to give you a little bit of perspective. Look at the size of this thing. It's just got absolutely massive. It's been incredible to watch it through the years and it's a great feeling to hang out in the shade of a tree you planted and look at the fruit of it. I'm not in the shade of it right now, but it's still, it's fun and it's cool. Right next to me, I've got a mailbox. People ask me all the time, why do I have a mailbox in my garden? And this stores all my tools and stuff. If I'm out here and it starts to rain, I can just throw a tool in there and not have to worry about it. In front of me, we've got this raised bed. You probably watched me put this one in. We've got a number of different things in here, an assortment of stuff, some lettuces, all different colors, beautiful colors. The lettuce in the front, the chickens have come and pecked out some of the stuff. This is their favorite variety, I guess. Uh, that's one they chose out of all the others. And you'll notice the rest of the bed, I planted it nice and dense in that square foot gardening method. So it's packed in all different kinds of things, some pak choy, some carrots, some different kinds of kale. And a lot of you have been asking, James, why raise beds this year? Why have you switched things up? Well, one of the reasons that I switched things up is I've got all my perennials in for the most part. They're really taking care of themselves. So now I can focus my time and concentration on annuals, trying to get as big as harvest as I possibly can. So what I'm doing is I'm taking permaculture, that food forest method, and some of the raised bed, and I'm taking those two ideas and blending them into my own form and style of gardening that'll work perfect for my own approach. Before I get moving into the other garden and show you how that's doing, I wanted to see if Tuck wants some pak choy. Hey, Tucky, want some pak choy, boy? Want some, boy? Come here, Tuck. So he's just relaxing now. Come here, boy. Want some? He's just relaxing now, but I'm sure he probably wants a snack. He loves the brassicas. He loves chewing on the stems of them and stuff. So Pak Choi is one he likes. This guy loves his snacks, and he earned it. We call him the guardian of the garden. He always keeps it safe. Recently, he cornered a groundhog, and we were able to catch it only because of him. So he's put work in. He's put time in. He was here from the start, so he earns it. And I don't think the garden would be the same without him. He's really an intricate part of the whole food forest. It's a paradise for Tuck, it's a paradise for us, and, and we just love being out here. Another reason I'm growing in raised beds this year is because it's exciting me. It's a different style, so it's one of those things where I can't wait to get up in the morning and I don't wanna to go to sleep because I'm always trying new things out. Like this bed here, I just put this one in. A little one foot bed in that same square foot gardening uh, scenario or method and we've got some zucchini looking great and between those we've got some nice sunflowers so nice tall sunflowers with the zucchinis between so a huge aspect about gardening in general is just enjoying yourself making sure you do things that are fun grow things you like to eat and do things or styles of gardening that really really excite you it reminds me again of Masanobu Fukuoka he says when you're out there planting seeds and planting stuff play like a child have fun enjoy yourself some of that gets imprinted into the plants because everything comes after its kind before I show you the rest of the garden I'm gonna give you like a little tour and it's looking fantastic, better than it ever has. I wanted to give you the main reason that I'm actually growing in the raised beds this year in the more intense square foot gardening style. And that main reason is actually all of you. So lately a lot of you have been sending me pictures and continue to do so of your gardens and the beds and stuff you're building and I see those and I just get so inspired that I realize I have to double down. And this year I decided to make a new commitment to growing as much food as I can, to spending more, investing more, going all in, holding nothing back. And again, a lot of that is from all of you. Why am I doing that? Because right now is the perfect time to do it. It has to be right now. Why? Because it's the only time we have. So I know that I'm not gonna waste any of my springs. We only get a handful. Tuck isn't wasting them either. I encourage you to make the most of your springs. Take advantage. If you don't have a spot to actually plant a garden, it doesn't matter. Get a book, read something, go help out in someone else's garden, grab a shirt, do whatever you can to get going. Now, I wanna go around and show you all the plants in the garden and how everything's doing. Strawberries, it's like a beetle song in here. There's just so many, it's kinda of crazy. Right in the middle, we've got this hazelnut tree and I've got probably five or six or seven growing now that the squirrels, they just keep planting. It's pretty cool, they do all the work for me. Right here we've got the blueberries, the two different varieties. This one variety already has the blueberries on it. And this is a, I forget the exact one, maybe it's Patriot, I know it's a dark, dark variety. And then this is the uh, pink lemonade, so that has some blueberries too. So it'll be cool to see the contrast I've talked about before. Underneath me I have a couple beds. This was a section where we put tomatoes in the past. So I'm still gonna put tomatoes in here, but I've got some zucchinis between them. So the zucchinis are kind of gonna sprawl out and grow along the wood chips and stuff while the uh, tomatoes just grow up tall. And it's okay for zucchinis and even watermelons to sprawl out over the wood chips because since it's the wood chips, it's not gonna rot like it would if it was a 
soil or something because there's not as much fungal activity at the top and it's not going to remain constantly moist. Let me turn around and show you some of the high intense gardening style that I got going on behind me. Before I show you the square foot garden, I wanted to show you this apple tree right here. This is a new one that we planted, a great variety. It's covered in the kaolin clay powder to keep the apple safe because it has a decent amount for how young it is. Right here we've got the intense gardening, this square foot gardening. It's been so much fun this year and it's, it's actually performed really well. Look at this spinach here. It's just an insane amount of spinach. I've been eating it too. And it's, uh, it's filling us up. I like to have spinach and eggs in the morning. Me and Tuck too, we split it. And you can see just the color. Fantastic. Uh, a number of different varieties here. Right in front of that, you'll notice carrots. Look at these, thinned out. And the square foot gardening method says about 16 per square foot. If I come over to here, you'll notice one of the sections of carrots that I didn't thin out, it's not doing as well. They need proper spacing. So the ones that I did thin out are doing great. This is the one that isn't thinned out. You can see the carrots are smaller. They're restricting their own growth. A bunch of different things in these beds, all planted a number of different varieties. We're doing companion planting and stuff too. So I'll get more into detail of that. And we're starting to put all of our tomatoes and stuff in. I got a lot, a lot of tricks for tomatoes. They're one of the things that we're known for growing. So stay tuned, it's gonna be a really exciting uh, tomato video coming up. I was just straight ahead at those beds right there. Now I'm in the front corner of the garden. I wanna show you some of the brassicas and some new stuff we have in here. So the brassicas are still doing fantastic. The ones that the groundhog didn't get. And we actually removed the groundhog with Tuck's help. So first I'm gonna show you those brassicas and I'll, I'll put a clip in of us actually releasing the groundhog. So what happened was he came into the garden and Tuck cornered them. And then we grabbed them with a crabbing net, just scooped them up and threw them in a, in a garbage bucket and then just released them. Right in front of me here, we've got a new persimmon tree. It's a fuyu persimmon, so that's one you're gonna be able to eat when it's hard, non-astringent, and look at underneath, more strawberries. I mentioned it, you gotta grow what you love eating because you're gonna be eating a lot of it. That's how it is. And uh, a bunch of different things here, lettuces and some parsleys and just a number of different stuff in this corner. As I move forward, we've got some more peach trees and stuff. And another reason why the raised beds are good is because perennials, like fruit trees and stuff, they love a fungal dominated soil. They like soil that's high in fungus. So wood chips create that perfect environment for that. While a lot of your annuals and stuff, they enjoy a soil that's high in bacteria, your compost and stuff. So that's another reason why the raised beds to me make a lot of sense. Also, I just wanted to go more of an intense style gardening because as you can see, the space is starting to run out. So when the space runs out, you have to be more creative. So that's what I'm trying to do. People have said to me in the past though, they said, James, yeah, you got all those fruit trees in, but soon they're gonna shade all your spots and you're not gonna be able to grow annuals. Well, that's kind of the design. That's what happened in the older food forest. I still have some space to grow some stuff, but I want the perennials to get big. The perennials are my food security, my food insurance that I put very little work in. And when I put these fruit trees in like that, I'm gonna have to wait till I get some fruit on it. So while I'm waiting for the fruit, I figure I'll get those annual yields. It's almost like having those perennials as your investments, your long-term investments. And then the annuals kind of act like an annual dividend that pays you off while you're waiting for your stock, your big tree to increase in value till it starts producing. And everything in here has a function. The main function of this garden is to provide food for me, for Tuck, and then enjoyment is also a part of it and an escape because this is our own little paradise that's today's video growers thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed it i hope you got something out of it me and tuck we're going to continue to make these videos where we show you the progression of the food forest as the faces of the forest change with the seasons and the different fruits and stuff if you enjoyed the video hit the like button hit the subscribe button share it with your friends don't forget to check out the merch down low too and don't forget to use our amazon affiliate link whenever you're shopping start your shopping with the link we're going to put it right in the description and also do not forget to continue to send me all the pictures of the gardens and everything you're putting in nothing motivates inspires and encourages me and tuck more than that we'll catch you guys in the next one james and tuck we out